after the elections, we all would have asked God, God, why did you let us lose? After all the work we did, we did a good job for the people of Ghana. We did water, we did electricity, we did infrastructure. We stabilized the economy. We solved the energy crisis. Why did we lose? We were asking ourselves, you know, but I've said that on reflection, all of us know that God had a plan. And whatever God does, we say thank you to him. Because today now I look back, I don't feel as sad that we lost the election. Because it gives Ghanaians an opportunity to be able to make a comparison between us and our opponents. And it teaches us, it teaches us a lesson in the politics of Ghana that you can lie your way into power but you cannot use lies to govern and manage the country. Because for us, we have always told the truth. We haven't lied to the people of Ghana and said we'll do something we can't do. If we come and tell you that, look, we're going to do this road, then we know that we can do the road, and truly when we come, we do the road. If we say we'll build a hospital for you, when we come, we build a hospital. If we say we'll give you a school, or we'll extend electricity, or we'll give you water, when we come, we deliver on those promises. But there are some people, he says, it doesn't matter what promise you make, you promise everything, just to get political power. But the point is, you forget that when you get political power, you cannot use those promises and lies to govern the country. Apparently there was another promise that each child in school will get one chocolate a day. Do you remember? Yeah. There was another promise that they'll give each child one egg a day. Do you remember? Yeah. I mean, why? Why do you do this to yourself? Yeah. Ezu, yeah. and our party must come back into power so that the good work that we started, we will be able to continue and finish. Look at the war hospital. More than 90% complete. Equipment are there, everything. And it was built to take care, give specialized care to the people of the Upper West region. Because a policy of NDC was that we didn't have to have people going from war to Tamale and to Kumasi and to Accra to look for specialized care. And so we're going to build a regional hospital in every region of the country so that that regional hospital will serve as the referral hospital for all the smaller hospitals within the region. And that is why we cited this hospital in Wa to do a regional hospital. And we had almost completed it. I visited here just before uh, the elections and the contractor conducted me around the physical structures have all been finished, and the equipment had actually arrived there, and containers, they are sitting there. And so the easiest thing for NPP to do was to just finish it, come and commission it, put your plaque there, commissioned by somebody, 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 and you take the credit. And yet, the hospital is standing there. Well, if they don't finish it, NDC will come back and finish it. In politics, you must be careful now of what you say because of social media. Video. <laughs> they are capturing everything I'm saying. When they finish send to friend, friend will send to friend, it goes on the social media. Tomorrow, if you go and say something different from what you said, they say, oh, but when you came to war, video here you are this is what you said and that is what is affecting my younger brother i didn't mention it anymore you don't need big names to manage economies yes nobody knew the names in the ndc's economic management team but we managed the economy and managed it well
you know and so you must be careful what you say and sometimes we take cheap political advantage me i'm not a person who likes to take cheap political advantage recently i was coming in northern region and students had closed from one of the community day schools and they, they were going home and so they blocked my car on the road. I didn't go into the school. They blocked my car. And then they said, oh, Mr. President, we just wanted to thank you for our school. I said, I said, oh, great, good. I hope everything is OK. He says, no, we have problems. Then I said, oh, I'm sure government will solve them. And uh, just study hard and make your parents proud. I gave a very encouraging message, and then I went on my way. The next time I see, he says, nobody should go into schools and do what I want. Who went into schools more than somebody? <laughs> we were in government, and there was somebody, he was always in the schools, and doing plain political politics, plain politics. And yet, we never sacked any headmaster. We never sacked any teacher because you have gone into a school. Then one of our aspirants for executive position goes to a school, and they show him how bed bugs have chewed him. Uh, uh, the students show how bed bugs have chewed them, and has a discourse with them. And you sack, you suspend the headmaster, you should hand over. You are investigating him. Investigating him for what? Investigating him for what? The schools have children who are 18 years and above, and they vote. And in our time in office, we allow the opposition to go into the schools because they are voters in the schools. But that is the problem with MPP. They are highly intolerant, highly intolerant. Things that we took for granted, they won't take for granted. And so the poor headmaster has been suspended. I hope that the investigation exonerates him. And the investigators should know that they in government did the same thing. They went into the schools and did politics.